Good afternoon. Today we will study about the reverse Polish notation. Let's take an example of mathematical expression. As we know that whenever we are solving any mathematical expression, we have to solve it from left to right side and we have to follow a precedence order that is board mass. And uh, this x and y in this expression they are called the operands whereas this multiplication sign and the addition sign they are called the operators. We can also say that this is the infix notation where infix notation is the notation where the operators are written between the two operands. Now what, let's see what is the reverse Polish notation. Now basically this is also a mathematical notation in which there is no need to write the brackets or parentheses and then you can calculate the answer of any expression without using the brackets. Now reverse Polish notation also follow the same sequence. It, if you have to solve the RPN, you have to move from left to right side. Okay. And you can use different operators for that purpose. You can use one of these operators for uh, solving the reverse Polish notation. Now let's take an example. Suppose I have this expression 3 plus 4. This is written in the infix notation where the operator is in the bit, in the center of these two operands. Now how we can write in the reverse Polish notation? Remember we have to move from the left to right side and uh, the moment we encounter the first operator we have to move it to the right side of the expression. So the simple notation for the RPN uh, is 34 plus or 3 4 plus. Now let's take an exa another example. In this example, we have three operands here, x, y, and w. So we have to follow the precedence order. So we have to move from left to right. So I move from left to right. The moment I encounter the first operator over here, I will move it to the right side. So this ex expression will become x, y, static, right? Now I have solved this part, so I have circled it. Now I have left with this part, okay? This one is unsolved part. So what I will do, again I will move from left to right and the moment I will encounter the second operator over here because I have solved this one. The second operator will come. I will shift it towards the right side. So the final answer of RPN is x, y, static, w and plus. Now let's see whether we will get uh, the infix notation of the RPN that we just solved. So this one is the RPN notation. So how we can convert it convert it back into the infix notation? For that, again you have to move from the left side to the right side, right? So while moving, the moment I encounter the first operator, I have to shift it between the two preceding operands right these are the two preceding operands so i will shift this static over here so this become x static y and this one is my solved part and this one is unsolved part right now again i am moving from the left to right so i will not touch this part because i have already solved it so when i move here the moment i encounter the another operator what i will do i will shift it between the last two or op preceding Operands. So this one is a one operand and this four is another operand. Okay, so I will shift it between these two operands, right? So the final expression become x x static y plus w. Now let's take an example from the Hooters book. There is an expression written in the RP notation, and uh, this sorry, this expression is written in in fixed notation, and we have to solve it in the RPN, right? So here we also have to follow the precedence rule. So I have to move from the left to right. But I see when I reach here, this is plus. But I also have a deviance sign over here. So according to the Bordmas rule, deviance comes first bef uh, before and it comes first bef uh, before the plus or minus sign, right? So I will solve this part of the expression first. So I will write P plus Q minus as it is. And then... When I saw this operator, the moment I encounter this operator, I will move this operator over here toward my right side. So this become RS and deviant sign, right? Now this one is solved. I will not touch it again, okay? Now I have to solve this part. So again, I, am, I have to move from left to right. 
So when I'm moving from the left to right, I have two symbols plus and minus. So according to our knowledge, plus and minus both have the same precedent. So when they have same precedence, we have to move from left to right. So I will solve this part first, right? The plus sign. So what I will do, I will write P and Q as it is. And then I will move or shift this plus over here after the second operand, right? And then now I have this expression over here. So I have solved this part and I have solved this part. But still my minus sign, this one is unsolved, okay? I have to convert this whole still in the RPN. So what I will do, I will again move from left to right. So this is solved. This is also solved. I will not touch them. So what I will do, this now minus sign is coming between the two operands. This whole is one operand and this whole is another second operand, okay? So what I will do, I will shift this minus sign after this second operand over here. So now my expression will become PQ plus RS dvn and minus sign. Now let's see how we can solve any RPN expression using a stack. For that purpose, we all we have also been given the values for A, B, C, and D. Now let's take an example. Here I have drawn a stack over here. This stack is inputting or being pushed with the values given in the expression. So first I will follow this sequence. B, the value for B is 2. So I will push 2 over here. The next one is A. So A values again 2. I will push the second value over here. 2 and 2. Okay. Then the next one is the operator. So the moment I will encounter a static symbol over here. So what I will do? I have to perform the operation on the last two values of the stack. Okay, what operation I have to perform? I have to perform the multiplication between the last two values of the stack. So it will be 2 multiplied by 2, 4. And remember, whenever you're performing any operation, you have to pop out these two values, the last two values, and you have to push the result of those values. So the result of this value is 4, right? So we have solved this part. Now, next. I will see which value is coming C and then D and then A. So what I will do, I will push the values of C, D and A. Okay, so C is 1, okay, D is 3 and uh, A is again 2, right? And after this, I encounter another operator over here. So the moment I will encounter another operator, what I will do? I said I will perform the operation on the last two values of the stack. What operation? The addition 3 plus 2, 5. I perform the operation over here and then I pop out the values and I push the answer over here. So 2 plus 3 is 5 and 5 is pushed in the stack, right? Now next, again, I have encountered another operator over here. So what I will do again, I will perform the operation the addition operation the last two values of the stack and then i will pop them and i'll push the answer five plus one is six so i push the six over here right then again i encounter another the last operator over here this is minus sign okay so what will happen you have to subtract these two values and remember you will not do six minus four always you have to start any operation from the bottom side so it will be four minus six it will be minus two right now let's see how we can write this RPN expression using the infix notation. Okay, so when I will try to solve it, the first in the first step I will see that I have to move from the left to right side. So when I'm moving, the moment I encounter the static sign, I will put it between the last two preceding operands. So it become B multiplied by A. Can you see here? Okay. Now this one is solved B multiplied by A and the rest one is unsolved C D A plus plus minus right. So what we will do now we will not touch this part and we will focus on the remaining part. Now I will move from left to right C D A and the moment I encounter the first operator what I will do in the infix notation I have to put this in the middle of the last two or the preceding operand. So this plus will come between D and A right so now this one is also solved now i have i am left with plus and this minus sign right okay so what will happen this is solved part 
right? Now see, this D plus A is solved first. Okay, so that's why we have put a bracket over here, D plus A, right? And then when, again, I have, I'm moving from left to right. So the moment I encounter this plus sign, what I have to do, I have to put it in the center of the last two preceding op operands between C and then this one. This whole is taken as one part and this, this is also taken as one part. So first I solve D plus A and now I'm solving then this part. Okay, so I have put this in the bracket. Now I am left with the last sign. This is minus, right? So what I have told you that whenever we encounter a operator, we have to shift it uh, in the center of the last two preceding operands. So this whole is taken as one part and this whole is taken as one part. So this minus will be shifted over here in the center, right? Like this. So this is my final infix notation. Now we can check the answer that whether we get the same answer that we got uh, using the RPA notation using the stack. In the stacks, I, I got the answer minus two. So let's see. I have placed the values of A, B, and C, D over here. And when I solve, I got minus two. So both have the same answer, right? Now let's see what are the advantages of using RPN. The advantages are that when you are using any RPN, uh, you don't have to, you know, solve that expression by using the brackets or parentheses, right? So this will result in a simpler expression. And also, as you don't have any brackets, so there is no ambiguity uh, that can rise by, from the using of parentheses in the infix notation, right? And the last one is that uh, when you use the RPN or you solve the RPN using the stack based algorithm, uh, it will take less memory and it will become efficient. Why it takes less memory? Because you are not using any brackets to, you know, write down the expression. I hope the topic is clear. Thank you.